I'm sure you're well aware by now that Nvidia announced their new RTX 30 series GPUs last week. And by now there's probably hundreds of different videos out there looking at DLSS and ray tracing and all these performance metrics based around gaming. But on this channel, we're really just interested in how these perform while live streaming. So what really caught my eye during the Nvidia announcement wasn't the monstrous size of the 3090, nor was it how sorry I felt for anyone that had recently purchased a 2080 Ti for $1,200, but it was actually the announcement of Nvidia Broadcast, which has been built to enhance ordinary microphones and webcams using AI to give you features like noise removal, auto framing, and green screening without actually needing a green screen. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing Nvidia's new AI-driven broadcast app to the traditional methods that I've been recommending for live streaming. So we'll be able to answer questions like, do you even need a green screen anymore? And how do the noise removal features work compared to the noise filters that you could apply in OBS Studio? And maybe most importantly, how much system impact are these gonna have if I'm running them while live streaming? Let's find out. Now let me start by making one thing clear. The actual NVENC chip, the chip inside of these cards that does all the encoding for your live stream if you set it to, uh, hasn't improved over the previous 20 series generation. It's the exact same seventh generation NVENC chip in the 30 series as it was in the 20 series. This encoder has been widely adopted by the streaming community and it's now implemented into pretty much every major live streaming software. So OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, XSplit, Twitch Studio, Discord, Elgato's streaming app, pretty much all of them use this new NVENC encoder. So in terms of straight encoding performance, there's actually no difference between the 30 series Ampere GPUs and the 20 series Turing GPUs. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that you won't see better performance whilst live streaming as these new 30 series GPUs should be able to push higher frame rates in game whilst you are live streaming. I ran multiple different tests in various different games whilst live streaming at 1080p, 60 FPS, 6,000 kilobits per second to see how much of a difference there was between last generation's $1,200 2080 Ti and this generation's $700 3080. As we can see, the performance difference varied depending on the game with around a five to 10% improvement in frame rates for the 3080, especially when you look at the higher resolution of 1440p. The obvious outlier here is Dota 2, which is running on the Vulkan engine, which seems to perform worse on the 3080. I believe that's down to probably the Vulkan API being less developed as when running Dota 2 back on DirectX 11, the 3080 once again outperformed the 2080 Ti. But things get much more interesting when we start to look at the performance differences when we're running Nvidia's new broadcast application. Nvidia have built broadcast to help people specifically who don't have a home office or a studio to still get access to more professional features. The main three features that they've added are noise removal, virtual backgrounds and auto framing, each of which we'll be testing. Let's start with noise removal. Now like the name implies, noise removal allows you to remove noise from your microphone live in real time whilst you're live streaming. Whether that is removing noise from computer fans, air conditioning, loud mechanical keyboards, babies crying, road noise, whatever it is, the aim here is to be able to remove it and just leave the sound of your voice. Now this was actually released a couple of months ago in a beta called RTX Voice, which I made a dedicated video on and I know a lot of you have been using for your live streams and really enjoying. The great news is that now it's included in Nvidia Broadcast, it's even better and it has less performance impact on your PC. To demonstrate just how well it works, let's jump onto the PC and show you how it works. Right, so here we are at the computer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test out the uh, noise reduction by typing on my loud mechanical keyboard. So hopefully you're gonna be able to see all of that if I zoom out as much as I can. Uh, you should hopefully be able to see mechanical keyboard and I'm gonna enable it as I am typing. So uh, right now it's disabled. I'm gonna start typing some things and then I'm gonna enable it about halfway through while still talking and hopefully you can just hear the talking, no typing. So mechanical keyboard typing now. And I can see from the waveform that's being picked up. If I now, whilst typing, enable the noise reduction, but keep typing whilst talking, hopefully it is now just my voice coming through and none of the clicks from my keyboard. I wanna compare with OBS uh, Studios noise filters as well, noise suppression I think it's called. And in the latest version, which is coming out quite soon, uh, version 26, there's two different noise suppression filters. So I'll test both of them alongside Nvidia Broadcast so you can hear the difference. So first of all, this is how it sounds when I am typing with no noise reduction, no noise removal anywhere. This is me speaking whilst typing with OBS Studio's noise suppression filter, the speaks setting. This is me speaking and typing with the new RN noise suppression filter in OBS Studio. And finally, this is me speaking with uh, the NVIDIA Broadcast Noise Reduction. 
You can also apply this filter to your teammates on Discord. So if one of your friends has a really loud mechanical keyboard or loads of background noise going on, you can turn this on to actually cut out that background noise for you as it comes through from their microphone. So your stream or your recording and you yourself won't hear it. Now, in terms of system impact, I again run some tests whilst live streaming to determine how much of an impact different settings had, as well as comparing it to OBS's built-in noise suppression filters. On the 2080 Ti, we can see that on average, enabling noise removal in NVIDIA broadcast costs around 6% performance, whereas for the 3080, that drops to just 2% both a massive improvement on the 15% or so that we were seeing when it was out as RTX voice. There wasn't really a massive performance difference depending on what you actually set the noise removal to and whether or not you enabled it on incoming voice as well. So uh, really it was just, if you had it on, it was around a 6% performance hit on the 20 series and a 2% performance hit on the 30 series. Next, let's look at virtual background, which is a feature that I first saw at TwitchCon last year and it allows you to do some cool things without the need of a green screen. You can blur your background, which simulates that sort of depth of field that you see on more expensive cameras. You can replace the background with either an image or a video of your choosing and the videos will just loop in the background or you can simply remove your background similar to how you would with a green screen except you don't actually need to spend the money on a green screen. This is all done with AI. So here we can actually see side by side the differences between NVIDIA's AI background removal versus using OBS's chroma key filter and an actual physical green screen to remove the background. So you've got to take into account that one of these is actually using a green screen and one of them isn't. So you're gonna save that big chunk of money by not actually needing to buy and set up a green screen. In terms of performance, NVIDIA have made it pretty clear that virtual background still has a higher performance hit than they would like. And similar to how they did with RTX Voice, they're looking to keep improving this and making it run more efficiently as it moves through its beta. Right now, as I'm filming this video, we can see around a 17% impact on the 2080 Ti and an 8% impact on the 3080, which is quite a significant amount, especially when you compare it to OBS's chroma keying with a green screen. But like I said, I expect the performance impact to continue to be reduced as Nvidia gets more data and feedback on their software. Next, let's look at auto frame. Probably, in my opinion, I think it's gonna be the least used feature of Nvidia broadcast but essentially it allows you to track your face around your camera frame so if you move a lot in your live streams it can always keep your face front and center. Now performance impact for this is around 10% on the 2080 Ti and just 2% on the 3080. So similar to the virtual background feature, NVIDIA have made it clear that this should be improving over the coming weeks as they get more data back. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with NVIDIA Broadcast, especially for such an early version. If NVIDIA can continue to pour resource into it, improving features, adding new functionality, whilst also making sure that they can keep the system resource hit as low as possible, I think I can see a lot of streamers using it to improve the quality of the content they're putting out. Now I've mentioned a few times about system impact and that's the main feedback that I've given back to the NVIDIA team who are working on broadcast. It's especially evident when you're using two or more of the features in broadcast together. You can see right now if you run the noise removal on your microphone and the noise removal on your friends on Discord, whilst also using the background blur for your webcam, you're looking at a pretty hefty 22% performance hit on the 2080 Ti or 11% on the 3080. The other thing that I would love to see them add into the software is the ability to use these features as a post-production process as well as for live production. So let's say you film something outdoors and there was a lot of road noise, you could remove the noise from that recording. Or if you wanted to apply a green screen to somebody from some footage that you captured, you could do that not live, but in post-production as well. Overall though, I'm really quite impressed and very excited to see where NVIDIA Broadcast goes. Who knows? maybe in five years time we'll be able to buy a $10 microphone and a $10 webcam and NVIDIA's AI technology will make them both seem super professional for your live streams. Uh, honestly, that could well be the case. Anyway, hopefully this has been a useful video. In terms of when NVIDIA broadcast actually comes out, I've just been told it's any time in the next two weeks. So it could be today when this video goes up, when the whole NVIDIA 30 series embargo lifts. The software could also come out today, but they might be fine tuning and making sure they can reduce some of those system performance impacts as well. So at uh, any point in the next two weeks, I'll probably leave a link down in the description as soon as it is up. In fact, I won't probably do that. I will definitely do that. That's my commitment to you. I uh, hope you have a good one. I will catch you in the next video. Peace. Go away. Trolls, be nice. Oh, that, be? be nice. <laughs> I'm always Michelle! Nice. <laughs> <laughs>